I'm your hostess, Nancy Schnabel. This program is part of a series celebrating the most exciting people in our community, the old timers. Today's guest is Anna Nat Fitz, who is an artist, a sculptress, and a prize-winning author. And one of the things that makes Annie's contribution so very unique is she didn't start to paint until she was 59. And since then, she has painted almost 200 paintings done in a historical vein of the northern Santa Clara County. Today, she's going to share with us some of her Los Altos paintings and also tell us some of the wonderful and occasionally funny stories that go with them. Annie, welcome to Los Altos History. We're so glad to have you here at last. <laughs> and I have a few questions to ask you because well, number one, I really can't believe you're an old timer. I'm, I look at all the things you've done, and there's nothing old about you. <laughs> I'm definitely an old timer. <laughs> well, how long have you lived in Los Altos? Uh, 66 going on 67 years. We came in 1921. And were you, so you weren't born here? No, I was born in San Francisco, and it was quite different in San Francisco too, because the ladies wore hats and gloves, uh, the men wore caps, and we had gas light. Our garbage was delivered by the dray horses, you know, all those fuzzy feet mm -hmm. that they have. And uh, the ice man came. And of course, we children would go in the back and sneak those little chips of ice. Oh, I did that when I was a and, kid, too. Yeah. And the traffic, uh, I would say, was a lot different in those days. Uh, I don't remember any stop lights. Of course, there weren't any stop lights. I don't remember any stop signs. And uh, when I was about five, I was with my uncle. We were going through the main part of San Francisco. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me how fast he was driving. He was one of those people. He wouldn't, his feet wouldn't touch the ground. He was always in a hurry, <laughs> but his feet didn't touch the ground. So when, naturally, when he was driving, he'd drive the same wild way. And I was scared to death of the crosswalks, the crossroads. And I said, Uncle, aren't you afraid if another car comes the other way? And he said, Dave, watch out. He spoke with the dialect. Oh, were yes, your parents from yes. another country? They were both from Germany. Our mother was from Austria, uh -huh. German descent. So your first language then was German, not English? Definitely German. When, did you, when and how did you learn English? We learned English on the street mostly because we always spoke German in the house. And uh, of course, I was born in 1912, so that tells my age now. And when the war broke out, here we were, the whole family speaking German with a thick accent yet. So we had to learn German in a hurry because they came after us with a stick. That was sort I of an, a, literally an impressionable English. Like. <laughs> yes. I have other friends my age uh, that were in the Midwest, and I'd as talk about the First World War, what I remembered and how it started and how it ended. And they said, well, we don't remember anything like that. So maybe but, your experience was a little more unique. Oh, yes. How it, many were in your family? I have three sisters, two sisters. Uh, my older sister is only three years older than I am. And Katie's in the middle and my immigrant parents. My and, and when you came to Los Altos, your father bought a little farm? He what bought, was it like? Uh, he bought an eight and a half acre farm. We had the smallest farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, on Santa Rita Avenue. It belonged to Mountain View. 
it was part of the Harrington subdivision. And uh, we were in the Fremont district. And to get our mail, which was about a block and a half away from us, on each side there were prune orchards. And it was like going through a prune orchard to pick up our mail across the street on El Camino. We didn't have to worry about cars. We didn't... Uh... Wait, was El Camino even paved? Oh, yes. It was sort of paved uh, two-way, you know, car for each way. It's amazing. Things have really changed in the 66 oh, years. Yes. I imagine the cameras are ready to roll to show just a few of the almost 50, 60 paintings that you've done of Los Altos. 80. Uh, 80. Oh, my gosh. 86. I wish we had time to show all of them. Annie, let's recreate Los Altos from around the turn of the century through the 1920s. Okay, cameras. This at one time was a horse farm on the corner of um, San Antonio and El Camino Road. And uh, I, have this, I did this picture facing uh, Stanford. And our farm, is it still? Yeah, our farm was the pale pink one. It was only eight and a half acres. And uh, the prune farms were 14. And next to us, uh, were 20 acres, La Favre's uh, ranch of apricots. Oh, the sounds that used to come from that apricot orchard when the migrant workers came, and uh, none of them spoke English, but we could tell when the fruit was ready, uh, they would start at the highway, and we were about in the middle of the ranch. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard such beautiful songs as those Mexicans that were singing. Sort of a harvest uh, song. And it would come closer and closer because we were about in the middle of this uh, 20 acre. Oh, it must have been beautiful. Uh, beyond the 20 acres was the Adobe Creek. Do we have a, a picture of the tank house? I'd like to see that. Annie, could you describe what a tank house is? I had never heard of one until I well, met you. Well, uh, a tank house is really built for the water, not for the house. The house is incidental. The tank held about 6,000 gallons of water. And it was usually fairly high for the pressure. And uh, I lived in this tank house with my family for 17 years until I got married. Uh, this scene is my dad. Uh, he was the original winemaker, I think. And here he is after he cut his grapes uh, with Daisy. And he's coming in the farm and uh, telling us what to do most of the it time. It sounds like such hard work that they did. We How did. about the next picture, which I, I understand shows the whole family in a field of green beans. And uh, I asked Annie a couple days ago, how do green beans grow? I'm a city girl. I thought they grew on a tree or something. <laughs> she had to laugh at me. But here they are. <laughs> no, uh, that's my mother and dad in the foreground. And my older sister was very serious. She's on the left. And uh, there's two little characters beyond there. We were always having fun. No matter how we worked, we always had to have fun. And uh, I really enjoyed growing up with my sister Katie. And when we talk on the phone, she says she appreciates the life she had with me. It sounded like a good life, even though it was such a hard life. Uh, we have a, another picture of Papa in the field, is what I called it in my title. And again, giving the feeling of being in a farm, uh, which to me is so alien. Because I, I, as, as much as Annie's a farm girl, I'm a city girl. This morning I asked her, did prunes come off a tree? wrinkled, and she, had, she didn't even laugh at me. She was so nice. That's the mark of a really good friend. So. Oh, yeah. We had, when we first came in 1921, we had a strawberry farm on each side of our walnut and almonds. And uh, we could see the next orchard. We could see all around every which way uh, on the farm. In fact, anywhere you went uh, northern uh, where we lived, you could see the hills all around us at... Uh, Really, you oh, really felt the space. Of course, you couldn't think about how good it was then because we had to work so hard. Yes, I can imagine that, that the way the work sounds. I, uh, next is the interior of the tank house. Oh, yeah, that's the scene. Uh, the scene we just saw, that's the view out of the kitchen window. And whenever I did dishes, I had kind of a ritual, and they used to tease me about it. I'd lean in the <laughs> in the water and gaze at that scene that I could see. I always loved it, the field and then the neighbor's uh, uh, orchard 
and the hills and then the, the mountains beyond that. And, and they, they, oh, excuse me, Annie, go on. I guess they thought I was lazy, but I really enjoyed that view. Would you describe your sister's reaction when you came home with a violin from school? Oh, oh, that was something else. <laughs> when I was about 15, Mountain View High School, that is, uh, announcement came over the loudspeaker, anyone with a violin could play second fiddle. Oh, I couldn't wait till I got home. I was going to play second fiddle, not, you know, not knowing anything. So uh, I begged my dad for a violin, and of course we had no money, but I knew he had a friend in Mountain View by the name of Hirschbeck who made violins. So finally, uh, he brought me the violin. And how did it sound when you played it? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> the picture that just showed showed the dog's reaction. <laughs> oh, the dog howled, and the first thing they did was chase me out of the house. But uh, I loved it, and I stayed in that orchestra till I graduated. Oh. And that music, uh, I just really thought I was in heaven. Yeah. There's nothing like being able to play with yeah. a group. What was the first song I played? What was it? Franz Schubert's Unfinished Symphony. Like my hair stood on end, and I don't know if the bow touched the violin or not. <laughs> that would be fine. And then next week, the picture starts, it's going to be the Wolfley Farm. And, oh, oh, here, no, excuse me, it's your mother milking the cow. And do oh. tell us the name of the cow and how she got her name. Oh, the cow. <laughs> That's Nellie Rigaudi. And she got her name from San Francisco. When we were little kids, we went to a wedding, and uh, this girl had changed her name to uh, Rigaudi. And Nellie Rigaudi, yet. So we had a lot of fun dancing around Nellie Rigaudi, Nellie Rigaudi. So naturally, when we got to a farm, most cows were named Nellie, so Rigaudi came tagged along with it. Did you, did you ever put a hat on your cow like I see in the old pictures? Or was that something that really wasn't done too often? No, we couldn't afford hats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and the next picture shows a very Van Gogh-like tree. Uh, and, and you described it to me as the Woofley Farm. Where was that in conjunction to your farm? Well, it was the next farm down uh, toward El Camino on El Camino and uh, Santa Rita Avenue, Los Salvas mm -hmm. Avenue. And uh, when I did that scene, I was just starting to paint. That was in around 1970, and Van Gogh was the thing. So I thought, I've never painted scenery. I always wanted to do people, animals, birds, nothing else. So I try to be Van Gogh-ish. Uh, and it, now we are down to one of my favorite of Annie's paintings, The Biting Horses. Tell that, us where this was. <laughs> this was um, at the village court, where that is today. 35 acres. Lauchs had a wild horse farm. And they would ship the uh, uh, wild mustangs by rail to Mayfield. And the cow Our audience, would you tell them what Mayfield was? Because oh, not South, everybody will remember. <laughs> South Palo Alto. And the vaqueros and the cowboys would go down the dusty road and uh, when the horses were all taken off of the box cars, uh, they would round them up and over to the corner of Lauk's farm. Did you ever see them being driven down El Camino, or weren't you I'm allowed to? I'm not quite to? that old. Oh, uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> I know I'm old, but not that. Nine, this was 1905. Oh, you weren't around yet. Uh, the next sh shot is going to be of an apricot farm. I know now better than to ask if they come wrinkled, so <laughs> having learned about the prunes this morning. And this was owned, uh, where, did it, where was this farm? Uh, between Adobe Creek and... That's the 20 acres the I was talking acre? about where the Mexicans would come and sing. Uh, that's uh, that farm where they had the 20 acres of apricots. Now, now how, it's how many apricots can you actually pick in one day? How many? Do they are in baskets that you're picked in? It depends on how close together it is. It depends on the crop and how heavy a crop it is. Okay. It depends on how big the fruit is. Uh, it's a lot of depending. Okay, our next uh, one is of a stagecoach. And this too happened much before your time, I'm sure. But uh, the stagecoach on, went from uh, Mountain View down El Monte Road to Moody Road, where the Duvenek Ranch still is. And that was one of the stops, I understand. And this painting 
is of, its, of the stagecoach stopping at the Duvenek Ranch. Can we have a quick shot of that? The barn is very, very old. It was, they said it was 100 years old about 10 years ago, so it must be <laughs> quite old. That would be and old. Uh, the building on the right-hand side is the way station where they would sleep, oh. and they'd change their horses in that barn. So uh, there, uh, originally, there was a porch in the front. Of course, that has just... It looked like a little house when I saw it. Uh -huh. uh, and I thought it was a, a Victorian Gothic, and I was quite intrigued since I'm fond of that time. They called it a gingerbread. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, another picture, I'm just going to disregard the one, that other one. Uh, it shows the Duvenek Meadow with the children and the geese. And would you mention how they got into being... What, were they the first hostel? They were the first hostel on the West Coast. And... Uh, they were very, very much for underprivileged children. So you could see why in the picture I had the various kinds of children pictured here. I have one of the Duvenek boys uh, on the right-hand side, which one I don't quite remember his <laughs> name. And now, as Los Altos is developing, we're going to go and see some of those pictures. Uh, Main Street, Los Altos. And you can see the hills. And one thing you did in this painting, I just love, Annie, and I meant to ask you about it before. You have the, the picture framed with some leaves. Are they the leaves from the great oak tree that stood at They're, the head of, the, uh, of Main Street at one time? At one time, this oak tree stood there, and we went um, on either side to go across. We went on the right of the oak tree, coming back, of course, uh, yeah. and coming the, and going. And describe the buildings. The, the, the first one would have been... Uh, Let's look look down Main on Street. On the left? Yeah, on the left. Can we just go right down the, yeah. the block mm -hmm. from First and Main? Uh -huh. There was what? The, uh, the Altus Land Company, and then there was the Eschenbrucher, the Low House, and then the Schaup building after that. And then across from the Altus Land Company, there's a building that's now a restaurant. Uh -huh. uh, what was that used for? Was that a grocery store? Uh, no, I remembered it as a dry goods a dry store. Goods store? Where dry goods. Oh. <laughs> dry I don't know, do they remember what dry goods <laughs> is now? They sold everything from Valentine's to hand cloths or whatever. And then uh, back to the Altos Land Company, they sponsored quite an interesting thing. Uh, it was possible to go to the movies in San Francisco, and there'd be, they'd take your ticket tab, and they would hold it, and if your name was drawn, you were given a 25-foot lot to Los Altos. And by hook or by crook, I don't know how the people got down there. Now, how did they get down to Los Altos? By railroad. They, by it railroad? Was a, I don't know if it was free or not. The barbecue was free. But they had a barbecue ta table free. set up. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Walter Clark was the uh, uh, public relations man. And it, it was really quite an event. The only trouble was when the people got there, they couldn't buy or build a house for this fifty was, for twenty five feet wide, this, they could only build it for fifty feet wide. Uh, this was the other party. About, I'm getting my parties mixed up. Uh huh. Oh uh -huh. dear. I've this party was mixed. all on the up and up. This was completely uh, on the up and up. Completely on the up oh. and up. <laughs> but uh, everything was free, and they were really right about everything. Oh, that's and wonderful. And Clark was a, also a publisher, and he published the Los Altos Star, which uh, he said uh, Los Altos was the crown of the peninsula. And for many years, I had his booklet, but I finally gave it over to History House. Uh, Rathbun's Plumbing, some of the merchants uh, that we have in town, or now, had in town. Uh, that stood where? Uh, almost, it was on uh, First Street East, uh, almost across from where the depot is. Mm -hmm. So before that parking lot is now? About where the parking, parking lot, lot is. And then the History House Museum behind the library, which you, I hope all of you in the audience, if you haven't gone there, you've missed a fantastic opportunity. We have a museum in Los Altos. And go and see this wonderful farmhouse at the turn of the century. And Annie's painting shows a wonderful uh, fields of golden poppies and blue lupine. And, and I can only imagine how gorgeous it must have been. He built that in 1901, or he bought the property in 1901. And uh, he uh, built the home and planted the uh, apricot trees. Then we have the Adams House, with, with its clouds of trees lining the driveway. 
And they were pepper trees, I understand, that Mr. Adams planted all the peppers on what later became Pepper Drive. And that's where this, uh, they took this picture from Pepper Drive. It, and in, in your painting, it, it just, it has a feeling like it almost might float. Mm -hmm. I, I love that painting. It's one of my very favorites. And Reverend Landells is next. Am I pronouncing his name right? Is it you're Landell or Landell? Well, we said Landells, Landels. although I've heard it both ways. He was the, like the self-appointed mayor of Los Altos, and he was into everything. He, if there were any school doings, he would officiate at the ceremonies, whatever ceremonies we had. And I remembered he talked to me once, and I was so afraid. I thought he was our own Bernard Shaw. So when he said a few words to me, I was ready to melt into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so that feeling yeah. of awe with a big personality. Yeah. The three Woodworth men are in another painting. And the Woodworth family goes back a very long time. Um, Ed Woodworth is still very much alive and a wonderful source of early history of Los Altos for us. And his, where, where was the, the Los Altos fuel and feed store? Now that's what this That was is. on First Street, uh, almost across from where Safeway is now, is where this building was. And it's uh, part of the parking lot now. It was close to the uh, Jerry Cavanaugh's uh, Oh, yes, where her Cavanaugh, where yeah. the Conocer Antiques yeah. was. And then there's another painting showing a big drum uh, on a wheel that turns out to be our first fire engine. Oh, yes. And when an alarm sounded, uh, he would hitch this to his Model T Ford, and away they would go with acid in that tank. And Ed said they saved a couple of homes that way. Uh, on the far left was a telephone company where I worked because I couldn't get any other job in the early 30s. I better not get into that one. Oh, that's a story that, that will take a too whole much. show. But so someday we've got, we've got to put right. you on. Some of Annie's story, she's a natural storyteller. And can you imagine writing your first story and having it win a state prize? She did. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> oh, it was talent. <laughs> And then the next uh, group of, of pictures show the building of our railroads. The railroads came to Los Altos. And uh, the first is of boxcars. And could you talk about how that, those boxcars were used? Oh, well, they were used like it was a regular station. Uh, anything, uh, all the mail came through that way. And uh, my friend Otto Brubaker would be helping out. And he told me various stories that I should not repeat now. <laughs> Uh, very interesting. And I have his letters, which I also gave to History House. Yeah. But uh, th th there's another one that shows the completed uh, railroad depot. And I think people in Los Altos will recognize that, because what is it now? It's the, uh, what the, is it? I don't know. It's, it's, I, the, I, it's the Mercury Savings Bank at oh First yes. near Maine. Mm -hmm. I just picked it up and turned it around. And I live in that area, and I love Annie's painting because the eucalyptus tree that it shows, I walk by every day. And it sort of gave me a sense of being in, a, in the past once I saw her painting. Uh, he was, oh, excuse me, I'm just owing and eyeing here. The schools. Do we have any shots of the schools? We have three that we'd like to share with you. The first is the Parisima School, which is now in Los Altos Hills. But you told me before the show that that... Even though it stayed in the same place, it was like your house. It kept right. in different places. It kept to moving be. around. Uh, in 1947, Los Altos bought it from Palo Alto. So uh, we haven't had it too long. And now it's uh, not a school anymore. It's uh, no. Although my oldest son and went to kindergarten in, <laughs> during the war. I don't know if he liked it too much. He said it, they had a ride too long. It took about an hour to get to school. He said. How did they go? Did they have a bus or bus? And it picked up children from all over. Really and, had to take yeah. their time getting mm -hmm. around. And the San Antonio School with the teacher Susie Corpstein. Corpstein. Uh, she taught all eight grades. Oh God, and um, she was a very strict person, according to Lois uh, Stockelmeyer. And uh, he said uh, she had a whip, a pink for the girls and blue for the boys. Oh, you kidding. But she was a very kind, fair person, he told me. He's gone now. Of course, he was... Uh, 
That was a long time oh. ago. How about the Los Altos Grammar School? So we only have a couple minutes. Tell the story about Katie getting uh, into school. Oh, how morning. can I tell everything at once about the Los Altos Grammar School if I only have two minutes? <laughs> now you have one and a half. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just tell about Katie. <laughs> oh, well, we marched. We saluted and we marched. And at that time, uh, we were learning the Charleston. And she goes up the steps and she thinks she's going to get away with it doing the Charleston to uh, Sousa's um, march. And they said, Katie Knapp, step out of line. And she enjoyed that uh, Charleston so much, but she didn't know why she should get caught. She didn't think it was fair. Huh? No, it wasn't fair. I could, you could just see this little kid doing the Charleston and going up and walking with all the other kids marching. I just love it. Victrola I was behind her. And strikes forever. Yeah, dee, yeah. dee, 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 de, yeah, And uh, yeah. our last view is the farm again. Had a tank house and the fields and the hills. You mentioned that as far as you could look anywhere, you could see hills. You could Why see can't hills. we now? Trees and homes and two-story homes. And, and now you, you don't see them? No. no well, Annie, a... I want to repeat your whole name for the audience's benefit again. Annie or Anna Knapp Fitz, artist, sculptress, author, mother, a wonderful wife to Joe Fitz for almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. and I think a we wonderful ought, husband. I think we ought to mention Joe. He does, has done something so he, unique. Everyone he puts Annie, up with me. Oh, every, one of Annie's, <laughs> every one of Annie's paintings has been framed by Joe. What a gift of love. Can you think of any other artist who's ever had a spouse like that? Annie, thank you so much for being here. I, we haven't touched the surface of your work. I hope you'll come again. And thank you for joining Access Los Altos. I'm Nancy Schnabel, and you've just seen Los Altos History.